across the wrestling world, there are ups and there are downs. There are many things that bring about legends and icons and Hall of Famers and Hall of Immortals inductees. And indeed, there are culminating moments in professional wrestling, epochs that change the future of companies' lives, and indeed the whole wrestling scene. Some people may look back at these events as what really kick-started a revolution in a certain area, in a certain style, in a certain place. Tonight, we try to do what we do every year, and become that epoch moment for territorial wrestling, become that epoch moment for mid-Atlantic wrestling, but more than ever, just celebrate that we're still here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Where It All Begins Again, 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a blockbuster main event that absolutely represents some of the greatest Mid-Atlantic wrestling has to offer. We are in the Ace Speedway. We are here in the glorious venue, the venue we have only managed to fill twice. Came here for Where It All Begins Again last year and failed to fill it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our redemption. I'm in a different recording studio today. So you may hear some things a little differently than you used to, and I hope that it's not too bad. It actually should be a better recording setup. It's a very nice room. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will begin where it all begins again, 2024. Huge card view this evening. Let's get it on. We kick things off with Sam Keith, who is, of course, the kind of the governor, the commissioner of the Confederation of the Territories, the uh, organization MAW is is a part of. He is the big bad. Uh, not the big bad, but he's the, he's the big honcho around here. And he comes out. But of course, despite the fact that the COTT is what he is in charge of these days, MAW is his baby. And indeed, Ace of Spades plays. He comes out to a sold-out Ace Speedway. And he gives a speech talking about how... 19 years ago, I believe it was, MAW started with a goal, a desire to see people uh, trained, see people made ready for the big time, for the big glory, and to maybe put on a style that some people would enjoy. And we sit here 19 years later as the paragon of training in professional wrestling in the United States of America. We sit here as the paragon of territorial wrestling. And tonight, more than any other night, we celebrate the existence of Mid-Atlantic Wrestling and the joy that it brings. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where it all begins again. And we get a video on the massive Tron of James Diaz and Gary Walker, our main event of the evening course super gary walker the return of the monster the big money monster james diaz for the mid-atlantic wrestling championship is our main event of the evening after the video the commentators uh, ernest forthyth whom and marvelous marvin ernest get on the uh, the mics and you know put over the main event talking about how james diaz has been the most dominant champion possibly in the history of mid-atlantic wrestling beating everyone in his path so much so he's barely made any defenses because nobody has proven on his level on the other side of the ring, Super Gary Walker, 5,000 to 1 at the bookies right now to win tonight. One of the most outside underdogs we have ever seen in a Mid-Atlantic Wrestling main event. He had to claw and scrape his way into the wrestling business just to be an announcer. He was called, He was laughed off, called a joke. Got off that announcer's booth, wanted to prove that his way was the right way. Trained through the Mid-Atlantic Dojo, and tonight has the biggest match of his career. Ha- just, should be happy just to be here and main eventing where it all begins again. But uh, he is, sadly, 5,000 to 1 to actually win. But you know what? There's still a chance. And, uh, you know, it could happen. As you know, we are kicking off with the debut of a tag team. Born again, for sure, and... Davis, Wayne, Newton take it to the Southern Stars, who have, of course, been a very, very uh, impressive tag team over their history here. Born Again just showing this vicious uh, this vicious attitude when they're on offense, you know, really nasty, high-flying moves from Davis, Wayne, Newton, the t- kind of uh, aggressive, brutal style we're used to seeing from Davis, Wayne, Newton, very Devil May Care. Ask us for for sure, uh, very nasty technical wrestling from uh, the, the the king of bros for sure, who of course has been uh, on that descent, on that change to a technical wrestler ever since he's uh, kind of seen a new change of attitude and indeed just really wrenching away at the uh, the limbs and, and ligaments of the southern stars. I'm going to quickly close my windows. I'm not going to be able to cut this out, so there's going to be a silence. And I apologize. I'll try to make it as short as possible.
All right, I'm back. That's better. <laughs> I didn't want any uh, noise seeping through. All right, so yes, for sure, really wrenching back on the ligaments of uh, of Tennessee William and Born Again, despite their uh, kind of lack of experience as a tag team. They are definitely good friends. They've traveled on the road together for many, many years, and they've got that natural chemistry, and they're definitely able to work together, isolate Tennessee William. I'll pick up a victory without throws asleep. <laughs> Alrighty then, we're moving on to our second match of the evening, which I believe is going to be Jack Wood taking on Holy Hardy Goldsworth. Indeed, it is Jack Wood, one of the most, uh, the, one of the greatest crossover athletes in the history of professional wrestling. Of course, he is managed by the greatest management uh, management uh, consultation specialist, MC Motormouth. But he's taking on Holy Hardy Goldsworth. He's got that passion, that uh, fury that righteous wrath, and he takes it to Jack Wood, but Jack Wood's so good at adapting to his opponents, so good at uh, diffusing situations, and so good at picking up the victory, getting the job done. And that is exactly what Jack Wood does tonight, picking up the victory with his zero choker. Up next, we have the return of American Elemental back here for a very special match against Sid Collier. Oh, but before the match, Sid Collier with a steel pipe just brutalizes American Elemental, just absolutely knackers his left leg, just attacking him while he's making his entrance, rolling him into the ring, but American Elemental limping, really nastily limping on that left leg of his, and the referee's looking at Sid like, I, I, I can't disqualify you, it was before the match, and Sid's like, there's nothing in the rule book against uh, going into a match injured, and American Elemental wants to fight, and Sid Collier has got a massive leg up here, and indeed, he starts to work that leg. Starts to work over the leg of American Elemental. Starts to really nastily lock in uh, Indian death locks. Nasty figure fours. Uh, single leg Boston Crabs. Just really taking it to that left leg of American Elemental. And every time American Elemental fights back. Every time he kicks out with his right leg at Sid Collier's face. And gets that little bit of separation. The type of separation that American Elemental would usually use. To really take it to his opponent. Every time he gets that little bit of space. He's unable to capitalize on it. He's unable to really get his style moving because he hits those ropes, but he hobbles on that left leg. And he goes to the top rope, but he falls and he, he stumbles. And every single time you give Sid Collier an opportunity like that, he's going to capitalize on it. One of the most vicious performers in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. One of the smartest performers in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Former three-time tag team champion here. And indeed, Sid Collier gets to work on that left leg and eventually picks up the victory in a very somber manner over American Elemental. Big victory for Sid Collier. Huge, huge victory. Won't, the record books won't show his pre-match attack. All they will show is that Sid Collier tapped out American Elemental. Up next, the architect, Dewey Archer, comes out and says, You know what? For, for, for so many times I have carried this company on my back throughout a year. So many times I've been the most must-see superstar in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling history. I've been the uncrowned champion. I've been the actual champion. Yet when it comes to the October show, when it comes to the biggest show, when it comes to the Ace Speedway, where 5,000 people have paid to see me, I'm not booked. That's a travesty. That's a disaster. I am the greatest student in Sam Keith's history. I've taken everything Sam Keith gave me and made it better. And you know what? I deserve an opponent at this event. So tell you what, I am going to lay down an open challenge. I'm going to lay down an open challenge to anybody, whether you're from the Mid-Atlantic, whether you're from Chicago, whether you're down south, whether you're down in Mexico or Canada, whether you live in Japan. I don't care. Come out here and face Sam Keith's greatest student. Go sound for a few moments. And then the music hits. And Matthew Keith is back in mid-Atlantic wrestling. Only had a cup of tea here before. He won the Sam Keith Classic only a few years ago. Has spent years in, in, in Japan, in Birminghammer, in Pride. Being one of the greatest Puroresu Gaijin stars of the last 10 years. But he is back in the States. He's been dabbling in Chicago, but now he is here to take on the architect, Dewey Archer. And a great match between these two, as they have a technical wrestling clinic. Dewey Archer with that flashy, 
mid-Atlantic style that he likes to bring. Going hold for hold with Matthew Keith, who of course is mixing in some great technical wrestling. Some Sam Keith style technical wrestling. With a little bit of Japanese puroresu, really nasty shoot style submissions from Matthew Keith. Every now and then Dewey Archer gets a little too flashy, gets a little too exhibitionist. And Matthew Keith just nails Dewey Archer with that elbow or a forearm or a chop to really slow the pace down and keep locking in hold after hold. And the Chicago wrestling champion Matthew Keith. Just dominates the match with Dewey Archer and in the end locks in his own proton lock. A beautiful proton lock from Matthew Keith which forces Dewey Archer to tap out. And is this permanent or is this a one time thing? Who knows? But tonight in a speedway in front of 5,000 people, Matthew Keith is back in his father's pet project. We have a match, the blow off match between Ruby Velasquez, of course, uh, the Saint, Ruby Velasquez, formerly the Sinner, taking on Mike Graves. And we have a nice uh, brawl between these two. Mike Graves, out of control, really nasty uh, strikes from him. Takes it to the outside very quickly. Really brutalizing the Saint, Ruby Velasquez, who doesn't have Holy Hardy Goldsworthy, uh, Holy H- Hardy Goldsworth, sorry, at ringside with him tonight, unfortunately. But the Saint still fires back, still fights back against the outlaw, Mike Graves. Really tries to take that righteous fury to him. Going blow for blow, fist for fist with uh, with one of the most brutal brawlers in the business today. But Mike Graves is able to uh, press the advantage, able to show just how vicious, just how brutal he is. And hit Ruby Velasquez with a mixture of kicks and a mixture of punches. And really brutalize down the Saint before hitting him with that sprinting high knee. Really nasty high impact knee to the face of Ruby Velasquez. Knocking him out and picking up the victory. Big win for Mike Graves. Big singles victory here, where it all begins again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our tag team main event. It's not the main event. It's the, Actually, it's not even the tag team main event. Our tag team championship match. It is time for uh, Amane Omai and Akira Arato, the Sam Keith Classic winners, to take on Audi Good, the team of Clinton Adams and uh, Darren Grigel. It's been a while since I've recorded. <laughs> For the MAW Tag Team Championships. And then a good match indeed. Arato and Omai use their uh, Pururesu spirit. Their Pururesu style. To really take it to the Tag Team Champions. And of course we have Darren Grigel. Who is a kind of uh, fighting spirit Pururesu man. Of his own volition. Really takes it to uh, Akira Arato. Who has had some of the most brutal. Some of the most vicious matches of the last few weeks. Last few months sorry. um, In that style. And then indeed, it is a back-and-forth match between two of the greatest tag teams in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling this year. But in the end, it is the tag team prowess. It is the tag team chemistry of Audi Goon, who have had to fight in the memory, of course, of the injured uh, Terry Dale. And tonight, they fight once more, continuing their impressive tag team championship reign as Clinton Adams defeats Amane Omei with the Dragon Rising and defense number three of the Mid-Atlantic Championships. <laughs> It is now time for another tag team match. It is, of course, Logan Mosbane and Dean Waldorf. Nope, Dean's gone. <laughs> Logan Mosbane and Marv Statler taking on Papa Dan and Robin DeLay. And indeed, in a good match, Papa Dan and Robin DeLay do pick up the victory. This one is emotional. Papa Dan, of course, having to fire, having to fight for uh, against some of the, the, the most, some of his most hated rivals. Of course, the, all four of these men have been part of Team Progress at some point. Mar Stadler wasn't the, part of the same Team Progress that uh, the other three were a part of at one time. It was, of course, Papa Dan, Robin DeLay, Logan Wolf Spain, and George Wolf. And then Papa Dan and George Wolf left or were kicked out. And then Robin DeLay and Logan Wolf Spain brought in the ring generals. Now Dean is gone. He lost last year to be kicked out of the promotion. Robin turned on Team Progress when he got a championship opportunity. And uh, was convinced by Papa Dan the team progress was no longer the way forward. And indeed, tonight, Robin DeLay shows with his friendship. It is a friendship. There's, you know, it, it sounds mushy. It sounds cushy. But it's true. His friendship with Papa Dan, that tag team chemistry and that, that kind of positive attitude. The kind of positive attitude that has gotten Gary Walker to the main event of the evening today. Is something that Robin DeLay has embodied since turning on team progress. Since becoming a uh, top challenger for the heavyweight championship of the world. He has embodied a positive attitude, and that spirit, that fire that he's got, brings him 
to the equal of Logan Wolfsbane and Marv Stotler taking them out mano a mano and in the end he is left in a straight up brawl with one of the greatest brawlers and technicians in the business Logan Wolfsbane and he is able to fire up fire back and take it to Logan Wolfsbane like not many have managed to do hit him with that monster powerbomb that they lay down and pick up the victory over the world's heavyweight champion after the match Logan Wolfsbane sorry uh, Robin DeLay gets on the mic and says, Logan, I've pinned you again. Straight up pinned you. So I think it is time that we finish our unfinished business because earlier this year I had you dead to rights. Earlier this year I had you beat. I have deserved the heavyweight championship of the world. And so I want another shot. I want another chance to prove to you that I'm the guy. To prove to you that I'm better than you. So what do you say, Logan? Logan. One more time, and then Sam Keith comes out for the second time tonight, gets on the mic, and says, Robin, Robin, you don't need a response from Logan Wolfsbane. I am the commissioner of the Confederation of the Territories, and I decide who faces the heavyweight champion of the world. That's not Logan's job, so I gotta tell you, Robin, you're right. You're top of the rankings. You're top of the leaderboard. You've got too many victories over Logan Wolfsbane and his cronies not to get the next opportunity. So we're going to do it right here in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling in December at the Night of the Champions. It's going to be Robin DeLay. It's going to be Logan Wolfsbane. If Robin DeLay loses, he will never get an opportunity at the World's Heavyweight Championship so long as Logan Wolfsbane is champion. However, I'm going to give you every opportunity, Robin, in your final shot for the Heavyweight Championship of the World. Because it is going to be a lumberjack match. And Logan Wolfsbane, I bet you're glad that you're friends with everybody in the Mid-Atlantic roster locker room, eh? Because it is going to be. The lumberjacks are going to be the Mid-Atlantic wrestling roster. How about that? And Sam Keith walks out to a big beaming smile of Robin DeLay. The Night of the Champions lumberjack match. Robin DeLay, Logan Wolfsbane. Let's do it. But ladies and gentlemen, before that, we have another match. Tonight's main event of the evening. The 5,000 to 1 underdog. Gary Walker facing the greatest, the most dominant champion in Mid-Atlantic wrestling history. James Diaz is a monster. He is the big money monster. He is the franchise. He is the man. And tonight, in front of 5,000 people, it is a blockbuster clash. And in tonight's main event of the evening, James Diaz just takes it to Gary Walker. Brutal lariat to start off the match. <clears throat> from, uh, from James Diaz. James Diaz just lariats Gary Walker. Gary Walker is down. Gary Walker is hurt. Gary Walker is starting to realize that he is in for a fight of his life. That he Maybe that 5,000 to 1 underdog tag can't be just shrugged off. Maybe he is facing an almost unbeatable enemy in James Diaz, but Gary Walker isn't going to lay down, especially not after one lariat. He, he gets to his feet slowly but surely. He climbs to his feet, Garrett. James Diaz, German suplex. Lands Gary Walker directly on his head. James Diaz starts to like pump himself up in the corner, starts to get ready, you know, very clearly uh, not breaking a sweat so far. And Gary Walker is in an immense amount of pain. He's been dropped on his head. He's been hit with a lariat. He's facing up against one of the biggest stars in the business today. But he gets to his feet again. Belly to belly suit likes from James Diaz. And Gary Walker is being dominated. Gary Walker is being destroyed here by James Diaz. And James Diaz tries to close in. Tries to close in to try and uh, get a mount on Gary Walker. But Gary Walker defends. Gary Walker gets James Diaz in his guard. Starts to try and transition him through. Tries to get a lock on that arm of James Diaz. But James Diaz is too quick, too powerful to uh, to be taken down by Gary Walker. And starts brutalizing his face. Just elbow, forearm, straight fist to the face of Gary Walker. As James Diaz does manage to get that full mount on Gary Walker. And uh, it's not looking good. For the uh, Super Gary Walker. It's not looking good for the entertainer. Um, Gary Walker as he starts to get just brutalized. Fist after fist. Elbow after elbow. Gary Walker gets busted open very quickly. But every fist he takes. He, he seems to fire up further. He seems to fire up better. And he, starts, he throws James Diaz off of, his, uh, off of his mount. Throws him halfway across the ring. Hits the, uh, the corner with, with so much fury and so much passion. And runs at James Diaz with a drop kick. And suddenly you start to think there is life in Gary Walker. Suddenly you start to think that he might just give James Diaz a fight and then lariat. James Diaz hits Gary Walker with a second lariat, knocking him down to the, the ground and just knocking all the um, 
all the spirit, all the fire that we had seen just out of the of the underdog here tonight. James Diaz starts to pick Gary Walker up, maybe for that tombstone, maybe for that money to burn, and uh, and Gary Walker slips behind, pushes James Diaz into the turnbuckle, rolls him up with a uh, with a schoolboy pin. One, two, oh, so close. So close to Gary Walker getting one of the biggest underdog victories in the history of mid-Atlantic wrestling. But he was just a second away. Couldn't quite do it. Couldn't quite do it. So, Gary Walker fires back up, though. Keeps on the advantage. Big drop kick to James Diaz. James Diaz stays standing. Second drop kick to James Diaz. James Diaz stands, uh, stays standing. James Diaz then hits the ropes himself. Hits Gary Walker with a shoulder tackle. Gary Walker stays standing. Gary Walker hits the ropes. Hits James Diaz with a shoulder tackle. No movement. Both men hit the ropes. Double lariat. They're still standing. Both men hit the ropes for a second time. And a second double lariat. And both men fall to the floor. First time James Diaz has really been knocked to the ground in this match. And Gary Walker, you can see he's in pain. He's on the floor. He's barely moving. But he's got that fire in his eyes as he claws his way to the ropes. And he climbs his way to the top rope. And an absolutely inspiring elbow from Gary Walker as he stays in this match. Nobody thought he would last this long. We're about 14, 15 minutes into this match at this point. And Gary Walker is taking it. He's not laying down. He's not surviving. He is fighting the big money monster. He is taking it to the man who said he just beat him. Easy. One, two, three, like that. But no, Gary Walker, like everything in his life, is beating obstacles, is beating expectations, and is continuing to fight against the big money monster. And James Diaz, though, will not be kept down. We saw this last year in the triple threat. Doesn't matter how much you throw at James Diaz, he's not going to stay down. He gets back up. Big, nasty knee to the face of Gary Walker. Big kick to the face of Gary Walker. Screams, does James Diaz, as he pushes Gary Walker into the corner. The referee calls for a break, and James Diaz waits, and he just gives a little slap, a little disrespectful slap to Gary Walker before cleanly breaking, and he walks off. But Gary Walker is infuriated. That was a mistake. You don't slap Gary Walker in the face like that, and he comes out of that corner like a house on fire. Massive, big boot to James Diaz, who is shook. James Diaz is shook and on the back foot for perhaps the first time in his championship reign. James Diaz is on the back foot and he gets back up and he gets another kick to the face and he falls back to the floor. James Diaz gets up again. Gary Walker goes for the brain buster. James Diaz drops behind, goes for his own lariat, hits the ropes, goes for the lariat. Gary ducks it. Kick to Gary to James Diaz's midsection. Brain buster to James Diaz. The monster is falling. Gary Walker goes to the corner. He's calling for it. James Diaz barely getting to his feet. Gary Walker goes to that bionic clothesline. James Diaz ducks it. Hits the ropes for another lariat. Gary ducks ducks that. Gary hits the ropes. Bionic lariat. One, two, three. And the biggest upset in mid-Atlantic wrestling history. Super Gary Walker is the mid-Atlantic wrestling champion. The biggest upset in perhaps wrestling history. James Diaz isn't locked out. James Diaz isn't completely defeated. He's still, as soon as the, the pinfall comes, he's basically up. And he is infuriated. He is incensed. But he calms himself. And he shakes the hand of the man that's beat him because he needs to regroup now. And he needs to come back because this is an absolutely incredible victory. And James Diaz isn't going to spoil the moment. James Diaz isn't that evil. He shakes Gary Walker's hand as confetti falls from the sky. And the boyhood dream of Gary Walker has come true as he holds the same title as Logan Wolfsbane. He still holds the same title Logan Wolfsbane once did all those years ago. And Gary Walker thought that there was another way. That you didn't have to wrestle like Logan Wolfsbane to be the mid-Atlantic champion. He's proven to all the young kids who watch this watch this program. All the, the young kids in the audience. The 5,000 strong at the Ace Speedway. That there is another way. That sometimes if you do the right thing. And you fight hard enough. That you can do anything. And Gary Walker has 5,000 to 1 underdog tonight. Beaten all the odds. Beaten all the naysayers. And he has beaten the big money monster. 
The era of Gary Walker has begun. Confetti continues to fall from the sky and the fireworks adorn the speedway as we go off the air for our 19th anniversary show and one of the first Mid-Atlantic Dojo graduates to come this far. Gary Walker, ladies and gentlemen, is your Mid-Atlantic Wrestling Champion. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Check out the rest of the series. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're feeling especially generous and particularly like the show, there's a link to my Patreon description. If you want to hear me ramble on Twitter, there's a link to my Twitter in the description. Thank you all for watching. I really, really do hope you enjoyed the show. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time for the Hot Prospects Tournament for the Proving Ground.